This is Vadim from Online Training for Everyone. And in this video, I'll share with you how to pass an aptitude employment assessment test. An aptitude test for employment is an assessment designed to evaluate an individual's natural or acquired abilities to understand their potential to succeed in a specific job or in a specific field. These tests are used by employers as part of the hiring process to assess a candidate's suitability for a particular role based on their innate talents, skills, and potential for development. Aptitude tests for employment can cover a wide variety of abilities depending upon the job requirements and their organizational needs. Some common types of aptitude tests used in the employment settings include numerical aptitude, verbal aptitude, abstract reasoning, spatial aptitude, mechanical aptitude, and a lot of others. Numerical aptitude questions assess a candidate's ability to work with numbers, perform basic arithmetic operations, interpret graphs and charts, and solve numerical problems. Verbal aptitude questions evaluate candidates' language skills, including the ability to comprehend written information, understand word meaning, and identify grammatical errors. Abstract reasoning questions measure candidates' ability to recognize patterns, analyze relationships between shapes and symbols, and solve problems through abstract thinking. Spatial aptitude questions assess candidates' ability to mentally manipulate and visualize objects in space, understate spatial relationships, and solve problems involving shapes and figures. Mechanical aptitude questions evaluate candidates' understanding of basic mechanical concepts, the ability to comprehend technical diagrams, and their aptitude for tasks that require mechanical reasoning. Logical reasoning questions measure candidates' ability to think logically, make deductions, evaluate arguments, and draw conclusions based on the given information. Aptitude tests provide employers with valuable insights into candidates' strengths, weaknesses, and potential to perform well in a specific job role. By assessing relevant aptitudes, employers can make more informed decisions when selecting candidates, identifying their training needs, or assigning employees a suitable position. In this video, you will have everything you need to get prepared for an assessment test. Make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end, and if necessary, multiple times until you understand all the questions and know how to solve them easily. If you would like to practice with the most recent version of the questions for this assessment test, please make sure to follow the link in the description and in comments of this video. And now let's go ahead and get started so we can get you ready for the test. I love this question because it really boosts your IQ and improves your intelligence. You're presented with three rows of objects. Each object represents a square and circle inside. You need to select the missing object out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. I have full confidence that you figured it out by now. And this is why I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To better solve this challenge, let's assign columns and rows to each object here in the picture. We will have columns A, B, and C, and rows 1, 2, and 3. This would allow us to reference objects better. As you might have guessed, each row describes the pattern of ball bouncing against the wall. Let's start by looking at the object A1. This is where the ball in the upper left corner, and it moves downwards toward the middle of the bottom section. And this is where exactly we see the ball in the object B1. After that, ball bounces and moves upward, and this is how we see it in C1. When ball bounces against the wall, it travels in the direction based on the angle of the initial impact. After the initial impact, the ball will continue moving in the new direction until acted upon by another force, such as hitting another wall or an object. Let's confirm this pattern by looking at the row 2. In the object A2, we see the ball against the left wall. Then it moves toward the bottom wall and then bounces against the bottom wall and then moves toward the right wall. Knowing the pattern, we can easily detect the answer now. If you look closely at the picture, the ball in the row 3 moves from the position 1 to the position 2 and then to the position 3. So the correct answer here is choice C. Did you get to the same answer? Or maybe you know the tips how to solve these problems better. Please make sure to post and share them in comments so we can all learn. 
here is the challenging problem by solving which you will boost your cognitive abilities. You're presented with five hints and using these hints you need to unlock the code and open the lock. The hints are in the digits 248 only one digit is correct and well placed. In the digits 845 two digits are correct but not correctly placed. In the digits 461 only one digit is correct and it is correctly placed. In the digits 592, only one digit is correct and it is well placed. And last but not least, hint that in the digits 904, none of the digits are correct. To open the lock, you need to process all the hints and select one out of four possible choices. Choice A, 518. Choice B, 485. Choice C, 418. And last but not least, choice D, 568. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. I am pretty sure you're done solving it by now, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer and solution. And if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have guessed, you solve this problem through elimination. And I'm going to start with the hint number 5, because it's the most helpful of all. Once we've learned that in combination 904 none of the digits are correct, we can eliminate two possible answers. We can eliminate both choices B and C because both of them have digit 4, which is an incorrect digit. Let's continue elimination to get to the correct answer. If we look through the remaining four hints, we learn that in hint 1, where digits are 2, 4, 8, only one digit is correctly placed, which is digit 8. In hint 2, two digits are correct, but they're not correctly placed, and they're digits 8 and 5. In hint 3, only one digit 6 is correct and it is correctly placed. And last but not least, in hint 4, digit 5 is correct and it is well placed. Based on this, the correct answer here is choice D, 568. Do you have any hints to show how to best solve these types of challenges? If you do, please make sure to post them in comments. In this section, we will look at the sample questions for verbal reasoning test for employment which typically represents an assessment used by employers to measure candidates' ability to comprehend and analyze written information. The questions typically involve reading passages, answering questions based on the information presented, as well as identifying relationships between words and understanding the vocabulary. Let's look at some simple questions that you typically see on the test to make sure you get ready. A very interesting question for you to try your skills. You're presented with nine letters of the English alphabet, and you need to build English business word. The letters are O-L-S-U-O-T-I-N-S. Take a close look to see if you can construct English business word. I am going to give you a quick hint. The word refers to a set of products, services, and strategies that are designed to solve specific business problems and meet the needs of organizations. Did you figure it out? The answer is solutions. Business solutions are typically developed by vendors or service providers who have expertise in particular industry or functional area. The word is spelled as S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N-S. And the goal of business solutions is to help organizations improve their efficiency, productivity, profitability, and overall performance by addressing specific challenges or opportunities in a strategic and effective manner. Can you come up with any other words using the same letters only once? If you did, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your verbal reasoning and analytical skills. You need to arrange the words into a coherent sentence and determine the last word in this sentence. The words are A. Coverage B. Protects C. Against D. Financial E. Losses F. Business G. Risks Take a close look, see if you can build this sentence and determine the last word in this sentence. Did you figure it out? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer, and obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To get to the correct answer, let's look at each word in this sentence to determine the meaning of the word and how to use it correct way. We start with the words coverage, business, and risks. These are not the objects of the sentence. We also look at the against and financial. These are prepositions and adjectives. The word protects 
is the verb and it provides valuable information in the sentence. The word losses is the object of the sentence and it provides information about what business insurance protects against. Based on this information, let's build the sentence. Business insurance protects against financial losses. Based on this, we can determine that the last word in the sentence is losses. And this is the object of the sentence, and it also provides a specific type of protection. So I believe the correct answer here is choice E, losses. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. There is an amazing question to test your English business vocabulary. You need to build English business word using all the letters presented on the screen. And you only need to use each letter once. The letters are G-O-I-S-L-T-I-C-S. -S. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Because I want you to succeed so much, I'm going to give you a quick hint. The word represents the process of planning, implementing, and controlling the movements of storage of goods or materials from the point of origin to the point of consumption. Did you figure it out? I'm going to move forward and share with you my version of the answer. But if you have a better way or alternative way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The answer is logistics. The word is spelled as L-O-G-I-S-T-I-C-S. To get better at solving these types of challenges, try to visualize the word and try different combinations. For example, if you look at original nine letters, you will see that if we start from the middle, you can start building the word L-O-G and then you build the remainder of the word to get to the correct answer. Do you have any other tips, tricks or techniques that can help you solve these types of challenges? Please make sure to post them in comments. I love this question because the answer represents such a powerful business concept. You're presented with 10 letters and you need to build English business word by using each letter only once. The letters are N, I, N, A, V, O, N, I, T, O. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. I am going to give you a quick hint. The word refers to the process of introducing new ideas, products, services, or processes that add value to society, the economy, or organizations. Did you figure it out? I hope the hint was helpful because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, as usual, please make sure to post in comments. My answer is innovation. And the word is spelled as I-N-N-O-V-A-T-I-O-N. What's interesting is that innovation involves combining creativity, technology, and practicality to develop new solutions that meet people's needs and address emerging challenges. Innovation is also crucial for the growth and development of the businesses, economies, and societies and it drives competitiveness, productivity, and progress. Let's look at the examples of the most recent consumer innovations. Number one is streaming services. The popularity of streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu, and Disney Plus disrupted the traditional TV industry by offering on-demand access to the vast library of movies and TV shows. The fact that I can broadcast my videos and share them with you directly is also part of streaming services innovation. The next one on my list is electric cars. The development of electric cars by companies such as Tesla, Nissan, and Chevrolet has provided consumers with a more sustainable and energy-efficient alternative to traditional gasoline-powered vehicles. Another example of recent innovation is wearable technology. The emergence of wearable technologies such as smartwatches, fitness trackers, and virtual reality headsets had powered people to track their health and fitness, stay connected, and experience immersive digital content. We also recently enjoyed innovation of online marketplaces. Companies such as Amazon, eBay, and Etsy revolutionized the way people shop by providing them with vast selection of products, competitive prices, and fast delivery options. And last but not least on my list is the smart home technology. The rise of smart home technology allowed people to control and automate various aspects of their homes from lightning and temperature to security and entertainment using voice commands and mobile apps. Do you know any other examples of recent innovations? Please make sure to share them in comments so we can all learn. In this section, we will look at the logical reasoning questions 
that are used to evaluate candidates' ability to reason and draw logical conclusions from the information given. The questions on this type of test typically involve sequences of shapes and numbers, analogies, and deductive reasoning questions. Let's look at some sample logical reasoning assessment test questions to get you prepared. I love this challenge because it tests your analytical skills and spatial reasoning skills so well. You need to find the resulting shape after the transformations. You're presented with the square that consists of different triangles of a different color. And you need to turn the original shape 90 degree clockwise three times. You have four different choices to select the shape after the transformations. Choice A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can calculate the final solution. Did you figure it out? Because I am moving forward to share with you my version and my way of solving it. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, you need to mentally turn the original shape 90 degrees three times. This is not easy to do because our brain is not really designed for this. But if we take one of the triangles and try to follow this triangle by turning the original square, this task might be much easier to accomplish. The caveat here is that, that we need to select triangles that are not symmetrical on both sides. For example, red triangles are symmetrical. You see red triangles on the left and red triangles on the right. And if we try to follow it, it would be extremely hard to detect where the red triangle will end up. But if we take green triangles, any one of them, or yellow triangles, they're much easier to follow. So let's do the turning. Let's take the original square and I am going to follow the green triangle on the left. Let's do the first turn 90 degrees. You see that the green triangle ended up on the top. Let's do another turn. We follow the same green triangle and now it's on the right side. And the last 90 degree turn, our green triangle ended up at the bottom. So the correct choice here is choice A, where green triangle ended up on the bottom. Do you have a better way to solve it? Or maybe did you come up with a different solution? Please make sure to post your thoughts and rationale in comments. Here's a very interesting question which might make you think, but hopefully you will get it very quickly. If five people can sew five shirts in five minutes, how long will it take for 100 people to sew 100 shirts? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 500 minutes. Choice B, 100 minutes. Choice C, 5 minutes. And last but not least, choice D, 60 minutes. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can get to the right answer. And on my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here's the trick. If five people can sew five shirts in five minutes, we can say that one person can sew a shirt in five minutes. Now, if 100 people work together, their combined productivity will be 100 that of a one person. Because we can scale up so easily in this production, it will take 100 people five minutes to sew 100 shirts. So the correct answer here is choice C, five minutes. Did you get to the same answer? If you didn't, please make sure to share your answer and rationale in comments. I love this question because it is used very frequently to test your analytical skills and business math skills. You're presented with three expressions. The first expression is candy multiplied by sun equals 15. Second expression is candy plus 4 equals 9. And third and last expression is 12 equals sun multiplied by question mark. And you need to find this question mark and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 2. Choice B, 3. Choice C, 4. And choice D, 5. Take a close look. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? I think you might benefit from a quick hint. And my hint to you would be, take a look at the middle expression. Are you ready now? Let's move forward and I'll share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. This set of expressions looks unsolvable. But in reality, if we start with the middle expression, we can actually solve it. Let me demonstrate. Let's start with the expression candy plus 4 equals 9. Believe it or not, but we can actually calculate it. Candy would be equal 9 minus 4, and we can calculate the value for candy, which would be equal to 5. Now, knowing the value of candy, let's focus on the top expression. Candy plus sun equals 15. We know that the value of candy is 5, 
and when we substitute candy, it would be equal 5 multiplied by sun equals 15. So the calculated value for the sun would be 3. And now we can focus on the last expression. 12 equals sun multiplied by question mark. We know that the value of sun is 3, and we can substitute it, and the new expression will be 12 equals 3 multiplied by question mark. Question mark can be calculated by 12 divided by 4. So the end result would be answer C, 4. If you came up with a different answer, please post your answer and solution in comments. I enjoy solving pattern questions because they are so easy to understand, but sometimes not so easy to solve. We are presented with the sequence of numbers, and we need to find the missing number, which is the next in the sequence. The numbers are 25, 20, 16, 13, 11, and then comes the missing number. You need to calculate the missing number out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Choice A is 8, choice B is 10, choice C is 7, and choice D is 9. Take a close look to see if you can do the calculations and come up with the solution for the missing number. It looks confusing, isn't it? But believe me, there is a hope at the end of the tunnel. And I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here we have a concept of decrement. And the pattern is that the next number is calculated as previous number minus decrement. And decrement increases by 1 with each number in the sequence. Let's take a close look. Our first number in the sequence is 25. And our first initial decrement is minus 5. 25 minus 5 equals 20. And this is how we come to the second number. Then we decrease decrement by 1, and the decrement becomes minus 4. 20 minus 4 equals 16. 16 minus 3 equals 13. 13 minus 2 equals 11. And 11 minus 1 equals 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 10. Was your answer different? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments then, so we can all learn. This is one of my favorite questions, just because it's so unusual. But the answer here is very simple. You are presented with the set of 8 circles. 6 of the circles are visible, and you need to select 2 missing ones. You have 4 different choices to find the missing circles. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To answer this question, we need to detect the pattern. And the pattern here is very simple. Each circle is broken down into sections, with darker sections and lighter sections. And if you look closely, you will see that all circles are grouped in pairs. And the pattern is hidden in the sequence for circle pairs, with each subsequent pair being similar to the previous one. Let's take a close look. To better understand the pattern, let's give each circle a unique number. If we start with the top row of circles, the numbers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and the bottom row of circles will have numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8, with 7 and 8 being our missing pair. If you look closely at the circle 1, you will see that there is a dark section at the 2 o'clock, and circle 2 has two dark sections, one at noon and another one is at 2 o'clock. Similar pattern you see in circles 3 and 4, and then circles 5 and 6 also mimic the same pattern. Looking at possible answers, you see the choices A, B, C do not meet this pattern, and the only right answer that fits the pattern is choice D. Hopefully you've got to the same conclusion, and if you didn't, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Here's the very interesting drum problem which I have full confidence that you will solve very quickly. You're presented with three drums, and the next drum in the sequence is missing. You need to select the next drum out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? You would be surprised how simple the answer is. And that's why I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, we need to understand the pattern, and the pattern will help us get to the correct solution. 
Even though drums and drumsticks look similar, this is not the case. If you look closely, you will see that only drumsticks are the same, but drums are different because they have dotted designs on each drum. Let me assign a unique number to each drum in the sequence. We will reference these drums as 1, 2, 3, and then the missing drum we will reference as number 4. Let's look closely at drum number 1. On the top of the drum 1, dotted pattern consists only of the white dots, but as it continues, you see different colors. Let's follow these colors. We have white, yellow, blue, pink, purple, and green. If we go to drum number 2, you see that the dotted pattern shifts as it goes from left to right, and then this pattern restarts. For example, the last dot in the drum 1 is green, but then in drum 2, this green dot restarts the pattern. To get to the correct answer, we need to continue shifting the pattern and get to the correct pattern for drum number 4. And the correct pattern for drum number 4 will be pink, purple, green, white, yellow, and blue. And drum that matches this pattern will be choice C. Did you get to the correct solution? If not, please make sure to post your solution and rationale in comments. I love this question because it tests your spatial reasoning and analytical skills so well. You're presented with overlapping set of objects. We have in the picture pink square, red star, gray circle, yellow star, green circle, blue box, and pink diamond. In the middle of the picture, we have a gap where nothing is presented, and this gap is represented by the question mark. You need to fill the gap with one of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look at the picture to see if you can fill the gap and find the missing object. I'm pretty sure you got it because I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The correct answer here is choice C. Let's confirm and verify it by moving this choice to fill the gap. To solve these types of challenges, you need to mentally build the object in your head by continuing to visualize in your head one of the existing objects in the picture. I used green circle. It is very obvious which choice would continue the green circle. But you can also use yellow star, blue square, or pink square. Do you know any other ways how to solve these problems? Please make sure to post your ideas on how to better solve them in comments. In this section, we will look at the sample questions for cognitive test, which represents an assessment used by employers to evaluate candidates' mental abilities, such as problem solving, critical thinking, and memory. The questions in the test can vary, but typically involve math problems, logic puzzles, spatial reasoning, and verbal comprehension. Let's look at some sample cognitive assessment test questions we typically see on the test. Have you ever dealt with the money tree? Well, now it's your opportunity, and it's your opportunity to check your attention to details. You're presented with the money tree making enterprise, and you need to calculate the total value of money that you see in the picture. What's interesting here is that each coin is one cent, and each bill equals one dollar. Once you complete the calculations, please select one out of four possible choices. Choice A, ten dollars and eighteen cents. Choice B, twelve dollars and nine cents. Choice C, fifteen dollars and fifteen cents. And last but not least, choice D, eighteen dollars and seven cents. Take a close look to see if you can complete the calculations. I think the correct answer here is choice A, ten dollars and eighteen cents. And here's why. I counted ten dollars in the picture. Let's start with the top of the money tree. One, two, three. 4, and then on the right, we see another group of the dollar bills. There are $5 there. Let's count them together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we see the hard-to-notice dollar bill on the top of the flower pot. Now let's count the coins. We see 9 coins to the right of the flower. Then we see 8 coins coming out of the watering can. And then there is one coin on top of the watering can, which is easy to miss. Did you get to the same answer? Choice A, $10.18? If you didn't, please make sure to post your answer and whatever other coins or dollar bills I missed in comments. 
I enjoy solving pattern questions because they're so easy to understand, but sometimes not so easy to solve. We're presented with the sequence of numbers, and we need to find the missing number, which is the next in the sequence. The numbers are 25, 20, 16, 13, 11, and then comes the missing number. You need to calculate the missing number out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Choice A is 8, choice B is 10, choice C is 7, and choice D is 9. Take a close look to see if you can do the calculations and come up with the solution for the missing number. It looks confusing, isn't it? But believe me, there is a hope at the end of the tunnel. And I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here we have a concept of decrement. And the pattern is that the next number is calculated as previous number minus decrement. And decrement increases by 1 with each number in the sequence. Let's take a close look. Our first number in the sequence is 25. And our first initial decrement is minus 5. 25 minus 5 equals 20. And this is how we come to the second number. Then we decrease decrement by 1, and the decrement becomes minus 4. 20 minus 4 equals 16. 16 minus 3 equals 13. 13 minus 2 equals 11. And 11 minus 1 equals 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 10. Was your answer different? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments then, so we can all learn. Here's the very interesting question which tests your ability to find solutions to unusual problems. You're presented with four expressions. And in fourth expression, the result of the expression is missing. Let's look at each expression closely. The first expression is 4 plus 2 equals 26. Something's definitely going on with this expression here. Second one is 8 plus 1 equals 17 height. Same thing here. And the third one is 6 plus 5 equals 111. In fourth expression, 7 plus 3, you need to find the result, which is presented as the missing number represented by question mark. And you have four choices to select from. Choice A, 608. Choice B, 410. Choice C, 290. And last but not least, choice D, 375. Take a close look to this unusual set of expressions to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Let me give you a quick hint. What if you introduce into this set of expressions not just the plus sign, but also a minus sign? Would that make any difference? I hope the hint was helpful because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have figured out, we are not dealing with typical math expressions here. Because the pattern here is that the last two digits are calculated based on the two expressions, subtraction and addition. Let's look at the example. The first expression is presented to us as 4 plus 2 equals 26. But numbers in 26 are calculated differently. For example, first number 2 is calculated as 4 minus 2. This is where I give you a hint of using not just the plus sign, but also look at the minus sign. And the second digit in 26, which is 6, is calculated as 4 plus 2 equals 6. Now let's look at the second expression. Second expression's result is calculated as 8 minus 1 equals 7, and then 8 plus 1 equals 9. The third expression is 6 minus 5 is 1, and 6 plus 5 is 11. That's where we get a three-digit number, 111. And now we can calculate the final fourth expression which is calculated as 7 minus 3, so the first digit would be 4. And then we calculate it as 7 plus 3, which would be 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 410. Did you figure it out? Or did you find a different solution? Please make sure to share your solution and rationale in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your spatial reasoning. You're presented with the three-dimensional view, and you need to select view from the opposite side out of four possible choices. The choices are A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can select the right solution. Please look closely, as it may not be as easy as it seems. Are you ready? Because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, obviously please make sure to post in comments. 
If your answer to this question was choice C, you answered it correctly. There are four objects on the original three-dimensional image. We have a duck, we have a basketball, we have a smartphone, and we have a hammer, which is barely noticeable on the original picture. And the easiest way to solve this challenge is to select one object and track it on the opposite side. I selected a duck, but you can as well select a hammer or a smartphone. It is a little bit harder with the ball because it's in the middle and it's a symmetrical object. So let's go back to the duck. If you look at the original image, you see that the duck is looking to the left and it is on the left side of the ball, which means that if we look from the opposite side, the duck will be looking to the right and would be on the right side of the ball. We frequently see these types of questions on the test, so to help you solve these types of challenges, here are the views of these objects from a different sides. Take a look at these objects from the right, from the left side, and take a look at this set of objects when duck and the ball have changed the position. I wanted to ask you, did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments, as well as you can supplement it with some tips on how to solve these types of challenges. Have you ever dealt with the money tree? Well, now it's your opportunity. And it's your opportunity to check your attention to details. You're presented with the money tree making enterprise. And you need to calculate the total value of money that you see in the picture. What's interesting here is that each coin is one cent. And each bill equals one dollar. You need to identify all coins and all bills and count the total value. Once you complete the calculations, please select one out of four possible choices. Choice A, $10.18. Choice B, $12.09. Choice C, $15.15. And last but not least, choice D, $18.07. Take a close look to see if you can complete the calculations. I think the correct answer here is choice A, $10.18. And here's why. I counted $10 in the picture. Let's start with the top of the money tree. One, two, three, four. And then on the right, we see another group of the dollar bills. There are five dollars there. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five. And then we see the hard to notice dollar bill on the top of the flower pot. Now let's count the coins. We see nine coins to the right of the flower pot. Then we see eight coins coming out of the watering can. And then there is one coin on top of the watering can, which is easy to miss. Did you get to the same answer? Choice A, $10.18. If you didn't, please make sure to post your answer and whatever other coins or dollar bills I missed in comments. Thanks for watching. If the content was helpful, please give us a like and consider subscribing. This is the way for you to tell us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links and resources referenced in this video, please check the description. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to find what you're looking for and download the materials. We really thank you for your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.